This is the Tom Bigby Tales. I'm your host, Shannon Evans. I write about a small town in Northeast Mississippi called Columbus. And sometimes, like tonight, I talk about the rest of the state. To hear tonight, I have with me Mary Frances Hurt, the granddaughter of Mississippi John Hurt, and the director of the Mississippi Hurt Foundation. Mary Frances, thank you so much for coming on this podcast, even though it's a sad event. Well, where shall we start? Somewhere in the middle of that, I, I just, just so much. I just don't know where to begin. It's just so much. It's just a whirlwind of this uh, irreversible loss, all life altering things that's happened in the last week. It's just crazy. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, I hate to bring up the sore subject, but start with the loss of the of the museum. How did you find out and what happened? I know that's a a really sore subject and, and very painful. Okay. I was uh, just uh, celebrating the, the uh, on Monday, uh, the 20th. Uh, finally, after many years of trying to get uh, the museum as a national landmark, and finally, that happened. Tuesday morning at 6 a.m., I got a call thinking this is going to be a celebratory kind of uh, thing. And I get the call of uh, just chill me to my very soul. And all my sister could say in a muffled and sad voice, the museum has been burned to the ground. I don't know. I don't remember hanging up from her. All I know is that my life and everything that I've done these last 37 plus years just went up in smoke. And I have there, I mean, I experienced a death that it's just indescribable. And I know what real death is to lose a loved one. And but this is just surreal. It's, it's just surreal. I'm, I'm still thinking uh, that uh, this is a nightmare, but uh, that just not happening. But the circumstances around it every day gets bigger and worse than before, if that's possible. Let's start with, um, you asked me to go down there, and I went and looked at the the site and I took pictures for you. Let's talk about the 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 lock gates on the house doors and the hinges that I took pictures of and the hasp lock. It's I mean um, that house has had those double doors and those iron bars and and the and the original door of that house with with two with double locks on it. And the iron gate is first and the here the the uh, and the bars of the gate was wide open, wide enough to reach your hand through. And um well, they were big uh, enough to put your shoulder through. I mean, I could have walked. I could have pushed myself through it, and that uh, and that piece of steel spring bar that wasn't scorched or anything, just laying a, a foot away. Well, it's right, and it's 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 that that iron that that iron strip that was at the entrance of the door. Uh, apparently, someone pulled that bar up uh, from the door frame from, from the floor, the the. the board of the floor of the entrance of the house and use that iron bar to pry those 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 bars open. Well there was absolutely no soot or or burn marks on the paint on that pry bar. No. None whatsoever. 
And and uh, for uh, when the sheriff told me hours after uh, the fire that it was uh, it was called by an electrical it was electrical problem. First of all, that museum is open only by appointments only. The electricity is always cut off by the meter. All the time for the last 30 plus years, it's always been that way. And and where he said there is a limb that could have hit the meter box. There's no way. There's there a, it's no, in a field. There's no there, way. There, there's no way. I mean, here's this thing. The, the meter box is facing a field. There's no tree near that a branch could reach it. And the branch he held up and that he said he saw and he threw to the side. If the meter, if the if the branch hit the meter box, they would have been concerned about that as well. It just doesn't. It just it just doesn't add up. It just doesn't. Well, how convenient is it? Hours after, less than uh, twenty four hours after this place is declared a, a, a national landmark, and it burns to the to the ground. Well, let's let's back up and talk a little bit about the sheriff. Um, the sheriff, uh, called you or you called him? I, ca I called, I, I called the sheriff's office. And then at that point, he told you it was an electrical fire? Um, uh, three hours later, um, I talked to the dispatch at the so, sheriff's so office. So less than, less than 12 hours from the fire, he's already declared it. Yes. And he contacted the press or the press he contacted, contacted him the press. he contacted uh he he, he 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 contacted the press uh in in in, in three major cities uh greenwood jackson and, and memphis tennessee and he even called the, the person that that uh uh, uh nancy uh nancy bell who who was the 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 director who came down and declared the house to take the final pictures for the for the magazine. Oh, for, for the, the National, National Landmark. Mm -hmm. National Landmark. Took the final pictures. So he called her to let her know that the museum had burned and it was electrical fire. Why did he call her? I, when you find that out, would you please tell me? Okay. Well, let me ask you another question. Carroll County's mighty small. I know there's a sheriff and a couple of deputies and the 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 receptionist lady who answers the phone at the sheriff's office. Is it usual for the sheriff to call news agencies to about a, about a fire in the county? Um, I I've never experienced this, and my mother had a major fire that burned her house down. Okay, and 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 the sheriff, I've never known him to do anything. I mean, I I had uh, called. A uh, sheriff Walker regarding people cut coming down in, in the back day like cutting timber on our property, and uh, Sheriff Walker came down, gave these guys a pass, told them to throw their logs off. They had already cleared uh, eighteen to thirty acres of property of, of timber in the fall of daytime. Nothing was done about that. Nothing, absolutely nothing. So he he has a history of ignoring the needs of of. African American well, absolutely. property owners. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And when I called, uh, uh, I, I called the, the county about the desecration of those graves, the, the the removal of that marker, the the state marker. Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, let well let's let me ask you a couple of quick questions, and let's then let's talk about the marker because you and I have worked hard on those markers. When, when Clint, so Clint Walker, did he call the ATF and the FBI and the MBI, or were they automatically notified by the National Landmark people? Can you, I, I can't hear you. Electrical 
Okay, I can't hear. I can't hear you. Can you move? Can you move closer to your to your? Uh, there you go. I couldn't hear you for a second. in the yard that was uh, that had no shit uh, or anything that was resembled that had been at all. What I find interesting is, is we still don't have an official report from the fire marshal, the state fire marshal, the ATF, or the FBI, or the MBI. And all of the reports that uh, uh, Chef Walker is giving out his last report, I've gotten uh, information from uh, people on the outside that, that have given this information from the uh, Chef Walker, but yet nobody has said anything. No one. Okay. So, so what? Where? Why is he announcing these things when there's no, there's no official word? It's, it's, this is a mind blowing. Every day it, it becomes more nightmarish, okay? Like today, I spent it dealing with a, 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 a police force that should have never been there in the first place in, in, in front of this very store, who was the cause of the headquarters of my all of my life. And she, uh, my grandfather and his lifetime was never allowed to go into this store. Let alone stay there. Yeah. And, and and as you know, Shannon, we um we took this to the to the uh, news commission, and they agreed for us to relocate. Yes. And after uh, uh, numerous times, uh, getting in touch with with um, draft persons to kind of you know, keep them to be responsible for doing things like that for the new trail markers, and who placed the uh, which was the uh, who had. The, the time of uh, commissioner had uh, placed that marker there some 24 years ago. Uh, and it, Grant, Josh wasn't the one who put it there, but he agreed that he would be located based on the permission of the, uh, the Bruce Trail Commission. And uh, so uh, we had planned to relocate the marker for the October 4th and 5th uh, Memorial Walk, and it didn't get done. So I called a Clint Walker, uh, not, um, Josh, Josh Hurst, Josh, Josh Hurst, um, at the last of January to, to prepare for uh, Black History Month of February for an event to help us uh, children from uh, the local school to come for a tour and, and, and watch the the uh, historical project that was installed by Carnegie Mellon University. He never called me back to date, and only to hear through a second source that he didn't move it because the owners of the of the of the Valley store uh, wouldn't allow him to come on first of all. That's insane. But he never and would so return your call. Calling him about this marker. That I that was not stolen, and they get out of press about that the that the, the store was broken into, and the, the blue trail marker was stolen, and, and they're all up in arms about finding it. And let me know it's not stolen; it was relocated as it sent the letter to uh, uh, the report. Let let me let me pause and read the the letter real quick. Okay, just for a sec. Let me let me pull it up and read it. It's going to take me a sec. Sorry about that. It says, I got it in my, in my, I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry, one second, wrong letter. Here we go. Here it is. It says, relocation of the Mississippi John Hurt Blues Trail marker 
Dear Carroll County Commissioners and Supervisors, the Mississippi Blues Trail was implemented by the Mississippi Blues Commission in 2006 to place informative markers in and around historical blues sites throughout the state of Mississippi. These blues sites were related to the birth, growth, existence, and influence of many blues artists, both men and women of the state, and in some cases beyond the state. The markers can be found on city streets, near train depots, cemeteries, clubs, and churches. Since the commission's inception, 20, 212 Mississippi Blues Trails markers have been erected throughout the entire state of Mississippi, as well as in 10 other states and four other countries. This iconic trail has become the most heralded music trail in the world. The Blues Trail is fondly known as the world's biggest outside museum and is visited by tourists from all 50 states in, in the United States, as well as attracting countless visitors from many other countries. Paragraph two, Mrs. Mary Frances Hurt brought to the Mississippi Blues Commission's attention that she and her family believe that the current location of the Mississippi John Hurt marker was better located in front of the John Hurt Museum on Route 109. She made a presentation to the commission. A vote was taken and approved of the relocation. We are writing to inform you of the commission's approval. Any assistance you can give Mrs. Hurt and her foundation to accomplish this would be greatly appreciated. Please let us know if you have any other questions or concerns. Signed, Rochelle Hicks. Director of Visit Mississippi and Chairman of the Mississippi Blues Commission. So, and now I have been chased down uh, like a rabbit for this blue trail where, where uh, Clint Walker's the client, the parent, this iconic museum as a electrical fire and doing nothing, nothing to find us who did this. But yet, uh, he didn't have a problem finding a report uh, for these people that had a blue trail marker that I'm giggling with. That you have permission to remove. That's how I spent my day. Not hearing from them regarding this, this, this travesty involving the foundation and, 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 this, and, and, and their county in the state of, and the whole of the state of Mississippi. That's the, the, him, a blue trail marker, which, which is now the cell phone of their attention as opposed to his father that has destroyed several functions of, of our culture. So nobody has, there's no more mention of the fire, except no that, no except, no that, and, except that maybe is it connected to the missing sign? The sign's not missing. It, it's not missing, and 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 and, 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 and the indication that it, they also declare that in addition to the the signs were missing, and that. So I was told by what the state commissioner, and now I'm I'm covering state property. But yet it was the same. They're saying that uh, I I can't have state property on private property. But yet that marker was on private property that they gave me permission to relocate. It's and a, so now it makes I'm, no sense. So I'm a, a so I, I'm a I'm a victim as well as a villain. Well, Mary Frances, we both know that they don't really care about Mississippi John Hurt, except in case he could bring them some money or notoriety. What's interesting to me is why are they so all wrapped up about a sign? Where nobody spends a dime on their property. Where uh, what the and 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 the John Hurt. Every time there was uh, visitors to the museum or or an event, there's no there's. <laughs> well, I mean, let's just be frank about it. There's two restaurants in Carroll County. Am I correct? That's correct. There's a gas station in. North Carrollton that sells, I don't even think it sells gas anymore. I think it just sells beer and fried chicken. I, I, maybe some candy. Where do you spend your money? What's there to spend money on in Carroll County? I mean, I usually go to Winona if I even, when I'm headed home from Carroll County, or I have to go all the way to Greenwood, which is in LaFleur County. 
what's there to spend money on in Carroll County? Uh, well, Carroll County has shown me they're not interested in in uh, having to do with with. Uh, they don't want tourism. To well, uh, they're interested in tourism as long as it relates to status quo. Uh, visit the, the slave houses of of, of, of yesterday's uh, plantation owners. Oh, the antebellum homes. The antebellum homes. The Annabelle home. But nobody, I mean. Uh, the J.C. George house, I think it is. Uh-huh. Well, God bless them for keeping that building up because that's expensive. But I don't think I know of anybody that's ever been there. And and I'm pretty involved in in the historical section of of those types of things. Who's Who even... Where do they spend their money? I'm telling you, what is there's not there's not even a hotel in Carroll County, is there? No, no, no. There's no. There's, is there a gas nothing. station? I guess there's the Hilltop gas station. Maybe in Blackhawk. Okay, the closest thing to any type of civilization as it relates to Carroll Carrollton or Carroll County is Grenada, which has hotels and restaurants to accommodate that. But there's, that's not that's not Carroll County though, is it? No, no, it's not. It's Grenada County, and then you have Lafleur County, which is uh, Greenwood, which uh, has accommodation, uh, a nice hotel. But it is it is definitely not for the average person to to uh, to, to stay there. You, you're uh, you're going there because you got you business know, or a reason. Of the night. And then the same for Winona. I think Winona's got a La Quinta or something. I don't know. It's a small. It's got Sonic. <laughs> but here's but here's a town that has nothing and doesn't want anything. And it absolutely, I don't care what um, an African American have accomplished in in in, in, in that county to no avail. No avail. Well, Mary Frances, let's share what happened. Um, well, let's let's talk about the graveyard where the oh. where the St. James Missionary Baptist Church used to be before you moved it from its last location. And and Mr. Charles Spain and and the struggle we had with the uh, board of supervisors. So Charles Spain was given a piece of property that had a church on it and, and a graveyard. Wait, wait. It wasn't, okay, if this person did not have property surrounding that cemetery, his deed clearly states, except the St. James Cemetery. Correct. Now, he could have been in place on his property. Yeah, he has he like 180 80 other acres. He could have, I mean, he, he said this land in the face of somebody else and had this bitch on a gray site right now as I speak. There is nothing more degrading, more dehumanizing than that. That is a Native American, African American cemetery. That ground is as sacred to my people. As then, as, as any cemetery would be to any other group of people, it's it's just degrading, and it's just completely heartless, heartless. Well, let, what, let's talk about that piece of land because not only was it the church to people who were enslaved, and then it was the meeting ground after. It was still a church. It was still a burial space, but it was also where the school was for the children. It was the hub of the African American community. Mm -hmm. It was it was the social center. It was the uh, edifice. It was the the whole center of the social activity that there was of any activity for African Americans mm -hmm. for generations since eighteen thirty seven. That's a long, long time. Well, 
And across the street is where your grandfather is buried, where Mississippi yeah. John Hurt is buried, and his son Johnny, and your father, who is his son, T.C. Right. His, his mother. His mother, his father, his father's father. All of these people are there. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And of all places that Charles Spain could have been. Why would he bury, if you're going to steal a part of a grave site, why would you bury right in front of this? He had he has more than a hundred other acres up there and hilltops. One of them has a big old deer stand on it, and it's a beautiful space. It's been clear cut. It could have made a beautiful uh, space for his family, but I don't know why he felt it necessary to desecrate an African American cemetery. Yeah, really worth, I mean, we have we're nothing, and the souls of our people. It does not count. They don't have souls. Remember that. Mm -hmm. They don't have that. Well, well, let's let's take what happened, and so you did the the memorial walk in October, and the and the Mount Zion Memorial Fund. We had put up a monument with the names of all the families, the Conleys, the Richardsons, the Hertz, all the people that the Becks, all the people who were buried up there, and who were from that community, and and we made a marker to hopefully prevent further encroachment. And you had the dedication in October with the memorial walk. And you had people there from all over the world. Tell us who were some. All over the world. All over the world. There, uh, there, there were people. Well, wait a minute. Hang on. You had people there because I have a YouTube clip. You had people there from Italy. Um, China. Yes. Germany, Ger Germany Chicago, um, Phil uh, um, Pittsburgh. You had them. I mean, they were from California. There were people from Memphis, all over the place. But there was that very person there from Carroll County. Not one. Not one person. Not even the press, and they were invited. Not one person. Uh, when I called the gang that came away to come down and do a prayer on the desecration of that grave, they sent a reporter there and he was taking pictures with his cell phone. And I asked him, Why are you, aren't you going to write a story about, about them? I mean, there, there, there are hundreds of people back here whose families are out here. That, that, that concern about this discrepancy. He told me, uh, I don't know what he's telling the truth about. I have to get, uh, talk to uh, uh, Charles Spain about what he did. Wait, Charles and Spain is going to tell you. Wait, he's the one who stole the land. The Mississippi John Hurt uh, documentary. He was at my house taking pictures of that girl who had worked in the Commonwealth giving me. A, a picture he had taken out of the house before it was moved in 1970-something. And he was there to take pictures. He was and he was on the front and, and back page of the cover the newspaper. And here, I called him out the very next day to do an article. That was a question. It was more important to him taking a picture with me than giving back a photo. So wait, me. did that, did that, I like Ike thing, did that, did that Roosevelt thing get burned up in the fire? No. 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 Hmm. No. So let's go back to the march. You were marching along. You're getting ready to go dedicate this beautiful, really tall stone that has uh, that commemorates all the families. Beautiful. And all these people from all over the world were there to help you celebrate and to celebrate your grandfather. And what did the Spains do? Guy came crawling to the crowd in a big truck, having the people scatter as he's mowing down this road and rush ahead to go and, and put up. Uh, he had an orange extension cord. Uh, an extension cord 
on the, on the, the interest to this great site that has been burial space for African Americans for 200 plus years. And, and here on Blue Walking, and, and everybody, especially the people from the other countries, was standing just, just, just struck and struck uh, up when he started shouting racial slurs to me. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I mean, one of the guys from Germany and China took pictures and it took a video of them. Yeah. Because they, they just couldn't exactly show them what happened at this event. So, the, it, so it, just in case it says my imagination, this, the next day, it was, it was, it, it went viral. So this, yeah, it's just uh, so so so. It's been two right at two weeks that the so two weeks and a day since the museum was declared a national landmark. Two weeks since it burned to the ground. I haven't heard anything. That one single statement from the ATF launched uh from Kerr County, although when I called Ken Walker, he told me automatically that it was electrified. And he said, call me back and I'll tell you what ATF said. But I can tell you right now, we all agree that's electrified. So then what, what what's the point? There is no, there, there. What he, does the point of me trying to, I know what the, what, what the verdict is going to be. And you were there when, when, when I was explaining to the sheriff, Mr. Yes, a crazy lady, great. He's saying to me, Well, do uh, you have a lawyer? He's not going to do anything about it. Well, so so let's let's go from. <laughs> let's, let's go back to the sign thing. What happened today? You, you, we, I was, I, I helped you put together the call. And to send that letter we read about the Blues Trail marker to that the sign isn't that they're declaring the sign's been stolen. <laughs> Waiting for any kind of word on this disaster that has just devastated me and, and, and all of his big job fans and those people around the world for genuinely care. I don't have an answer for, for that. And here, in the midst of this, someone called me and told me, oh, well, uh, there's a claim that the, uh, the blue shell mark is missing. So, and my first, of course not. We relocated, like we had planned to do in the, in, in the beginning. So it's not stolen, it's, it's, it was relocated. The foundation relocated as we, as we were given permission to do. But suddenly, the white community is all worried about us and and the sign uh, was relocated in the midst of concern about the fire and about potential additional issues and so the the foundation relocated the sign a day or two after the fire and they're just now noticing it the fire was the 21st or the 22nd 22nd and the sign was relocated the 23rd or the 24th of February, and it's now March 6th? What's today? 5th or the 6th? Yeah, it is. It is the 6th. So they're now, they're, so it took them, it took them two weeks to notice that the sign was removed? And then when I called the press to tell them, hey, we, we uh, the foundation relocated it as 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 a downward uh, as protection. No, we did. So the church still exists. So so uh, I, I talked to Mr. King, and he said, "Oh, there's no problem. And this, it, we understand, and, and we we're going to do our best to support you in this and and whatever. No problem." I was not so, wait a minute. Who's Mr. King? Who's Camille King? Uh, he, he was, uh, of the uh, the Blues Commission. Okay. Okay. 
two hours later, he called me back in a tippy, saying that, oh, well, uh, they, uh, everybody's uh, still depending down in, 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 uh, um, and, and all the papers really blowing up, and, and, and you could be charged with uh, uh, stealing state property, and, and so you need to release it. And, and what? You gave us permission. You said you, it was not your job to move, to move it. The county said that uh, they couldn't come on and private property to remove a sign that they had put there years before. I'm baffled. So, so, so basically, let me let me put this out there. Basically, a black person's museum home burns to the ground, and there's no uproar. Nobody's worried in Carroll County. Nobody's calling any politicians. Nobody's doing anything. But the sign, it. the sign that you have permission to have moved is moved by the foundation that has permission to move it. And they're calling every congressman, they're calling everybody at the Blues Commission, the white community there is putting all this pressure on the Blues I mean Commission to make you. It, what, I, I'm I, trying to find. A matter that they told me that I could relocate. Which we just read the letter from the Blues Trail Commission. But no, no, man, you, none of these people, none, that one, uh, uh, that one county, state, city representative have called me to express any kind of concern on this travesty, this travesty, not only for the county, not just for my family, but for globally, the people that have come to that museum these 30 plus years and brought tax dollars to that state. So, so, so let me get this straight. You went to the county, nobody did anything, starting with Josh Hurst, who is your Board of Supervisor and for your district and the Highway Supervisor or some such thing. Okay, number one. Then, so when the fire happened, did you contact the NAACP locally? No. Who did you contact? Uh, well, initially, I I called I called um um the sheriff's office in Carrollton. Okay. And and from there the balls the ball start rolling from from there. Okay. Uh, Clint Walker, uh, call I guess called the uh, Greenwood Commonwealth, which they, they came out and ran a story without uh without about the fire. They got him the investigative reporter out there on site. Okay. They just took his word for that. It was no um no foul play. They they but, didn't call the they didn't call the ATF the MBI the FBI. Or the fire marshal themselves. They they just took it at his word. Exactly. Okay. So now let me get this part straight. When did you start getting threatening phone calls? Before the fire or after the fire? And before, tell me. Before and after. And I, 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 I kept getting, I had gotten a, just a, a flow of calls from, from fans all over the globe when they found out about the fire. Okay. So I get an unknown call, uh, 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 unknown call of about eight thirty uh, p.m. on on a Friday, and and I kept getting those calls, and finally I answered this this, this unknown call, and and this and the person on the phone who wasn't there told me uh, next I would be the museum now. But nigga, next it would be you. And after seeing pictures that was taken from uh, at my house, where then someone clearly drove up and it, you know, it seemed like a four wheeler, a, a big truck, all the way up to my window where I sleep with when I'm there. Had I been there, I clearly, I really believe to my heart that 
they would have they would do they would have done me harm. And I'm still afraid to come to that state. I have been asked by uh, uh, a, a person that I trust very well called me and, come and said, Mary, it is not safe for you to come here. It is not. It is not safe. But I mean, what have I done? Nothing. What have I done? Uh, existed. You, you know, the you and I are both from Mississippi. We know the answer to that question. <laughs> What I have done is to have brought good to that county. That's all. And anybody, any any reputable state or, or, or county would have been prepared of what I brought to that county. And all I've been saying is for acquisition after acquisition. And now my life and the life of my sister that's down there is at jeopardy too. And with no protection, she's in a vulnerable place. Why? Because I'm black? Not because I, I, I've, done, I've done anything destructive. Not that I, I, that I, I, I have done anything I've done. I have brought people to the county and to that state that didn't know that Mississippi had decent people there, really. And that Bruce, that Bruce Hill, as we... Uh, have brought people from all over the world. But yet, in this county, where the most iconic Jews in live, it's not welcome. Do you know that John Hurt's sign and his home, that, that blues trail marker is the most visited blues trail marker. I'm pretty sure that's correct statistic. Is the most sought out blues trail marker I have had people to from all over the world who have come just to find his grave site. I have put thousands of coins over the years and, and those picks from various countries that they leave on his grave site. And flowers, a lot of flowers are left there. And people come, I've had um, interviews from uh, magazines from all over the world. This Carroll County has been there where this house is. I have magazines from this, from uh, Time Magazine from China in various places, various countries that have come there and took pictures. People have uh, Plan their vacation with their kids to come to that museum. All I brought to that town through Daddy John's kind spirit is good. Good. That's all. And for this kind of chaos to arise in a, in a person's legacy, it's, it's, it's wrong. And it's so very, very painful. I, I, I'm just, I'm so depleted. Well, Mary Francis, I'm, you know, I'm just, at, I'm just at a loss for. So, Mary Francis, if you would like to tell people. What, what can people do to put pressure on the Mississippi Blues Commission and the people of Carroll County to get that sign and keep it where it belongs and get it corrected because we know there's information on it that's not correct to put that sign up on the Mississippi John Hurt uh, property How, what can people do? They can write the governor, take leave. Okay. They can they can write the county officials. Okay. They can cry out in, in their community, in the various churches, because and and just uh, 
and just really genuinely care enough to see our, our, mis- our injustice to win win. It's injustice to all. This is the 21st century, for God's sake. You, you know what I find so interesting about all this? And I also encourage people to write to the Mississippi Blues Commission and let them know how they feel and that demand that they do the right thing. I think they will, but I don't trust anybody in this day and age. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna say something. My mother is from Yazoo County, Mississippi. She's a very humble woman. She's an incredibly well-educated woman. And when you and I wanted to go to the Mississippi Blues Commission, you said, I'm going to get a hotel. And I said, no, you're not. We're going to go stay at my mama's house. Yeah. And you got to stay in the pink bedroom with all the pillows. <laughs> and then we ended up bunking together because. <laughs> I, I mean, she, I mean, all of those great experiences and, and, and all of this. I mean, of all of the places in the whole world, in the whole wide world, here is this little town that Daddy John sung about, that brought people sick in this place well, that he loved so much. Well, that's where I was going. My mother sat there and listened to you talk about your grandfather, and she looked at me and she said, all he sang about was love and so it you know my mother was a journalist she grew up in the 30s and 40s and you know she was a young woman in the 50s and 60s and she was a professional uh professional journalist and you know she was like people don't understand how important john hurt is and the blues trail and the people in the blues and 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 what this has done for our state, I mean, Carroll Carroll County could have been like Clarksdale. Now maybe they wouldn't have had all the big fancy hotels and stuff, but they could have captured their own history, and instead they let it be destroyed. And they keep destroying it, and they don't care. But yeah, yeah, yeah um. The thing with with this is it cannot be the onus of a small county that is that that is only history or 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 or, or their fame is known for the greatest lynching. Well, and what do you was, expect when they still they still have the the Confederate flag flying at the courthouse? I mean, yes. do you remember where we sat in the courthouse? We sat right under where the lynch, where the lynchings were, or excuse me, they called them hangings, the ha- where the hangman's noose hung. Remember, we sat right over the trap door. And, and I remember even greatly, even greater, when I visited, when I first started the, the foundation uh, some years ago, and I uh, asked, the mayor asked me to come and, and 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 talk to her. I, I invited her. She uh, invited me to come and talk to her. And when I got to her office, um, I was waiting, and she had a eleven by fourteen picture on the wall. And I and I went up to it and looked at it and, and with interest. And I finally uh, realized it was a, a picture of a lynching. Oh, good lord! Crowd of people gathered around, picnic baskets and uh, on the ground, and she said to me, "She broke my she broke my shirt when she said, that's a nice picture, isn't it?'" Oh and my it was god! Our last that we had in a here. nice picture. Yes. Oh my and, god! And she said, "Uh, well, can you wanna? You must be Mary Francis. You wanna come in?" No, thank you. I don't want to be your last picture. I want this to be your last one. Okay, on this picture right here. I don't want to be in a fight. Oh my I mean, God, that's horrific. I was stunned. Stunned. But I'm telling you, this journey of, of, of this bringing some, this museum back, and and it is 
not no longer shocking to me. It is unbelievable to think what I'm going through. It's, it's unbelievable. Well, Mary Frances, I know we need to wrap this up and I want to continue this conversation again because there's so much more and I know more is going to happen tomorrow. Um, as you continue to deal with the the ATF, the fire marshal, and the sign, that bloody sign, um, I can't help but think that there's a connection between us trying to get that sign moved and the we had I had just sent another email around to the county officials I had been in the courthouse just before the fire I mean the week before I can't I mean we had so many conversations about what still needed to be done and why that sign hadn't been moved and and that was when I had that conversation with the uh, person at the um, visit Carrollton, you know, their their convention, their visitor center, who told me that uh, that Josh Hirsch wasn't going to move that sign because it was on private property and he couldn't move it after we had been told over and over he was going to move it, and then suddenly to find out through the grapevine. Yeah. Not even a decency of a phone call. No, we found it. If, if, if I hadn't asked that person, and then that was on Friday, and on Monday, it burned. There are no coincidences. I will put, I will put myself on the line on the sixth day of March 2024. I may not ever find out who did this in my lifetime. But I was bet everything that I worked for materialistically that I own in all the years that I have put into this. I believe with all of my heart and soul the political body of that of Carroll County from the County Board of Supervisors the sheriff's office, Josh Hurst, all of them, if they did not set that fire themselves personally, they know who did. They know who did this. Well, it's just, there was the, I, I called about the sign. I talked to that person on Friday. On Monday, the house was put on the National Register and on Tuesday, it was gone. Tell me, Somebody explain to me how that isn't related, and I'll tell them. Well, if you have uh, uh, dementia, like I do. Oh God, <laughs> that's true. That's true. According to the sheriff, I have dementia. Yep. So you must have dementia. dementia. I must. I must. Or I'm just crazy as as. Uh. Mary Francis, we can't solve this tonight, but I'm gonna. You know what? It's I. I I might offend somebody, and I don't even care. Nina Simone was right. God damn Mississippi, because this is the worst of what Mississippi is. I have been fighting. I mean, I've only been fighting for three years. You've been fighting for how many years on this house? 37 30, years. 37, and I've been along on three years of it. 37 years of this. I can't even imagine how you feel. I and all can't of the even money, imagine. All of the time. I mean, but here's the thing with this. You know, um, God bless our Browning sweet, sweet soul. He was a white guy. As I was cleaning out the house, he came down. He was a fan of Daddy John. Mm -hmm. And this guy was so kind and so good. And he could play, he entertained the people as they came from various countries and, and other states to the museum for years, for years. And Art brought the, the good of that county to that little house. 
and they preserved it. They kept it. A decade later, a wave came through uh, Greenwood, where all of these people that used to live on on, on uh, the affluent side of Greenwood have peppered those hills, fleeing African American from their community. And where this property is, where the museum is, is a hiding place for people who hate like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I know. Show up And I just, I just shudder to think. I mean, to try to explain to those people. I mean, all for the last week, for the last week, Shannon, I it's people calling me from other countries, various states trying to wrap their head around this craziness. How are we trying to preserve my grandfather's legacy with all this in me? I don't know how to, I don't know how, I don't know what, to, I don't know how to do that anymore. But where do I go? What do I do? And why do I have to question something that is a part that should be a pride of everybody who lives in the state of Mississippi? And it wouldn't really matter if Daddy Jam was quite black or polka dot. This is a cultural. It is, it is the one thing that I found that, that I found so reckoning in my soul is through music. Through music. That is the common denominator that has that has has have brought that great that, that sealed that, that gap of the of the division that has separated us as a culture, as a race of people. I I was taught through this through the legacy of Daddy John. To treat people and accept people for who they are, not by their skin color. And I'm telling you, uh, Shannon, God forgive me, but what has happened has taken me back down those dark roads that has brought us so far, and. I can say with affinity, Carroll County is absolutely the worst place on this earth. I've never encountered so much hate in my life. Never. Me either. And I've lived all over the world. I mean, th it is just despicable. Despicable. Mary Frances, I want to thank you. We're going to encourage people to write to the Mississippi Blues Trail Commission, to the uh, governor of the state, Tate Reeves, to the Carroll County, Mississippi Board of Supervisors, and to local law enforcement to demand a fair and impartial investigation into the loss of the Mississippi John Hurt home museum and to ensure that the blues trail marker sign is moved where the blues trail commission said they were going to move it to which is onto the mississippi john hurt um, museum property which includes the saint james missionary baptist church that was moved to that property in addition in addition i would encourage people to Go to the Mississippi John Hurt Blues uh, Foundation, which is uh, a nonprofit, as well as onto their Facebook page and to follow. And if you are able and if you are of a mind, 
to provide uh, some financial support for the rebuilding of the uh, museum. It will have to be a replica, of course, um, sadly, but it's such an important piece of history that it, the only way to show racist, white supremacist communities that uh, this will that this legacy can't end and it won't end is to stand up and to rebuild, because as Mary Frances says, like the Phoenix, let's let's help John Hurt's memory rise from that fire so that it can be a bastion of truth and hope for future generations. Mary Frances, you have a last thing you'd like to say. I would, uh, thank you, and God bless you, Shannon, for uh, and the Mount Zion Memorial Foundation for your kindness and and, and help securing uh, at least the the grave site and all you've done for the betterment that you're doing for the betterment of of Mississippi and abroad. Because I I, I think uh, when you address the needs of your own home. And, and, and this being your birthplace and, and, and where your your ancestors are, then you are securing a place for the world and generations to come. And and and, and thus will fulfill your purpose of living. And that is whatever uh, whatever legacy that you were given, it is uh, it is your God given a duty to leave the world better because you live. And I thank uh, Daddy John for living a life that I could model and to and to uh, to emulate and to say from the epitome of my heart is that I pray that those the people who have supported me over the years, wherever you are, that you would would come or and see and, and embrace the cultural differences of all people, no matter, no matter what. And, and, and let's, as one, build our home place, our world, which is, is if, if this is where you stay, the, the home state of Mississippi, you may not can, uh, alter what's going on, but individually, collectively, one by one, we can change and be better people for one another. And I, I've been blessed having uh, experienced that from people. But I want to feel that my support, uh, Shannon, before you and, and Tita Wayne came along, I've never gotten any type of assistance until you and, and, and Tita Wayne and the Mount Zion Memorial Fund came along. And to have that um, assistance just gave me hope and I'm in a huge hole was punctured in my in, in my my uh, my confidence in in, in, the, in Mississippi being a welcoming place for my for my culture for uh, securing the legacy the cultural being a part of of, of of being a productive part of a community at large that my four parents have contributed to, to make life better for me and for my generation and others to come. And I just, um, and as uh, our land has been taken bit by bit, in that little corner that we have that I have opened up to the world to come. Shannon, I, I, I'm just, praying and asking people to just make some small contribution to, and, 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 that, and I'm not talking financial, making a call if you care to your local official, to the state, to the governor's office. Express your concern if you, if they, if, if, if you care. And I believe that 
that that will make a difference. I really believe that. It will. It really will. Your voice matters. People's voices. People don't understand the power of contacting their elected officials. Mary Frances, can we continue this conversation again in the near future? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, okay. we can. And, and if anyone have any questions, they can. Uh, I would be happy to address those if they want. Uh, okay. Uh, fill those to you. I would. Uh, okay. I would definitely be happy to entertain those questions. Okay. Well, God thank bless you, Shannon. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, Mary Frances. I give my love to you. And Thanks. this is this is the Tom Bigby Tales. Until next time. Good night. Next. God bless.